Hi, this is Harold Long. Welcome to the Hill Tran United Weekly Message and Podcast. I'm glad you're making time for this week's teaching. I will have more to say at the end, but for now, let's dive right in. Our scripture reading comes today from Romans 5, uh, verses 6 through 11 of the Common English Bible. While we were still weak, at the right moment, Christ died for ungodly people. It isn't often that someone will die for a righteous person, though maybe someone might dare to die for a good person. But God shows his love for us because while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So now that we have been made righteous by his blood, we can be even more certain that we will be saved from God's wrath through him. If we were reconciled to God through the death of his son while we were still enemies, now that we have been reconciled, how much more certain is that that we will be saved by his life? And not only that, we even take pride in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the one through whom we now have a restored relationship with God. May God bless your hearing, your understanding, and application of scripture. Well, good morning, friends. Pastor Harold here. Welcome to everybody here and those who are online and those who are listening on demand after the fact. We're glad you're with us. We are in a message series titled Romans. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Today's message is titled Humanity, Seemingly Hopeless State of Being. And we've been in the book of Romans for quite a while. We've taken some breaks for Easter, for Pentecost, and we've had some guest speakers back to back here. We had uh, Pastor Lonnie here a few weeks ago. We had Brother... Uh, Sullivan McCormick here last week and all fantastic messages and those are available online. If you missed any of those, I encourage you to go back and listen to them on demand, either on Faith Life TV or on our YouTube channel, or you can watch them, uh, you can listen to the audio on uh, our website under the sermons tab. Um, In this message series, which we've been in for a while, we're going through the entire book of Romans. um, it's, it's a powerful, powerful message series, and one that you just can't rush through. And if you've seen the, the bumper video, for those who are live, you, it, you watch the bumper video, you've seen how this impacted great theologians in our past. Martin Luther, John Calvin, John Wesley, just to name a few. How it was a life-changing, it was an apocalyptic moment, it was transforming to get into this book. And this book is the same book that really changed my life as a Christian. And so that's why we spent a lot of time on it. So I just want us to lean into that. So if you missed any of the messages up to this point, again, you can watch those on demand. Uh, you can listen to them on our YouTube channel, on our website. And I encourage you to go back. All the uh, lesson plans, bulletins, everything is available to you in those spaces. Inside your bulletin are a couple of things. One is the lesson plan for today, and I encourage you to pull this out and use it. If you're online, you can go to our website under lessons and bulletins or bulletins and lesson plans and download the PDF. But I I encourage you to use this as a tool. It will guide you through our message today. On the front part of that is the next six-day challenge, which are some quotes and scriptures and and challenge and reflection questions to think about each day to kind of keep this message going throughout the week. Inside the bulletin at the bottom left-hand corner are today's reflection questions. And there's some, you know, and these questions, I don't make them easy. I really want to challenge your faith. I really want to ask the questions that I know you all have that sometimes you're afraid to ask. And I put those questions there for you to ponder, and I encourage you to think about them. If you're challenged by them and you want to talk about it, we can definitely have a conversation around those questions. And I welcome that from an online listener, a pod listener, or somebody that's live with us in our own uh, kingdom community here. Um, But I want to uh, welcome you to use that material as we go through today's message. We're going to hit a lot of scripture as we go through today. And uh, it's a powerful lesson in, in, the, in chapter 5 of the book of Romans. Uh, we're just going through ch- verses 6 through 11, but there's a lot of meat on the bone. Um, I'm going to uh, share with you some statistics uh, from uh, the Barna Group. The Barna Group does a lot of polls, and they, they interview a lot of people. And this is from 2002, but the, the question, this, this is what Americans believe about death is the title of this poll. And the question was, a group of Americans were surveyed concerning issues of life after death. So this is a group of people, probably a thousand people or more, were a part of this this poll. And listen to the results of this. Now this is 20 years ago. And I want you to think about that on steroids 20 years later, what this looks like. But this is what it looked like 20 years ago when people were posed this question about life or death. 10% believe we return to the earth in a different form. 
So they believe in reincarnation. Are you going to come back as a fly, a cockroach, you know, a kangaroo, a frog, um, what? So 10% of the people polled, and let's just say it's 1,000, so 100 people believe, believe that. 10% believe that there is no life after death, that you experience this life however long you live, and then once you're dead, that's it, it's over with. Lights are out. Mark Twain made the quote one time. He said, I was dead billions of years before I was born, so I'm not afraid to die because I've already been dead before. You know. 24% believe the soul lives in a different place determined by past actions. So determined by your deeds will determine what happens in the next life. So I'm going to just think about these. These are real questions. 48% believe we either go into heaven or hell depending on confessing sins and accepting Jesus. And the remaining 8% were undecided. Now think about that 20 years later of what that looks like today in, in this postmodern world, this world of relativism where people are at. We just had a poll, I think I mentioned it a few weeks ago, that came out by the Pew Research Group that just asked the question about, do you believe in God? Which they do every 10 years or so. And they just did this poll. And it's down 6% from the last time they've done it. Of people that will affirm they believe in a power greater than themselves, a higher power, some form or some version of spirituality or God. So it's down 6%. So if you took that on average and added it to these numbers, these numbers would be that much greater. So the question is, why is that? And what does this scripture we have today have to say about that? And it really challenges the question about the lower power, the enemy, the dark side, Satan himself, um, Star Wars version, if you like, the dark side. But this lower power, the enemy, do you even believe in that? The principalities and powers, uh, this unseen, unhidden force that's in the world that centers in our mind, that gets, does everything it can to get us to walk apart from God. Do you believe in that? That's a fair question to ask yourselves. Do you believe in it? Or do you believe it's just if you're a good person, you do good things. If you're a rotten person, you do rotten things. And that's just, you know, it's based on choice. It's based on free will. You choose how you're going to behave, how you're going to, how you're going to do things in life. And, uh, or is that influenced by a, a power greater than yourself? A, a power, a lower power. Is that being influenced by that? So these are fair questions to wrestle with questions about evil and darkness in the world. Why do things happen the way they happen? Um, and so what can we point to? So I think, it, depending on how you answer that, it's how you're going to look at this chapter. If you, if you believe that's the case, and you believe that you can't save yourself, and you can't fix yourself, then there's good news in what I'm about to share. If, if you don't believe that, and you believe you're in charge of your own destiny, and you make your own reality, and you make your own truth, then this, what I'm about to share with you, is going to be a total turnoff, and it's going to be a pushback, and it's going to conflict you, and you're not going to like it, and you're probably going to shut this message off and be done with it. So wherever you're on your spiritual journey will determine how you lean in today. But, so we're going to dive into it, but, our, but, but we're going to get into God's word. In Romans 5, 6, right off the bat, Romans 5, 6, shows us that humans are helpless to save themselves. We, 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 can't, we can't save ourselves. You know, and that's just the reality of it. We, we, can't, we can't not save ourselves from the inevitable. And the very first slide that you have... In, in, your, in your lesson plan. So no matter how hard humans try, no matter how hard we work, humans cannot perform enough good deeds to merit good favor. So if you're one of these people that hang on to, well, I'm a good person, I pretty much live a good life, I just go to work, I do my thing, I go to school, I don't really bother anybody, I leave everybody alone, I'm nice to people, that should be good enough to find favor in God. And that's, I see how you can drift into that mindset. But the reality is your good deeds don't earn you favor with God. And the reality is what's your definition of good? You know, you say you're good, but what's God say? You know, what, what's the word of God say about your goodness? You might justify that. And, and, uh, and who are you to judge that? And where does that come from anyway? This ability to choose right or wrong, this moral law that exists inside you. And so there's some scriptures that back this up. Here they are. So here's the first one. This is uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. Listen to what God's word says. You are saved by grace because of your faith. This salvation is God's gift. It's not something you possess. It's not something you did that you can be proud of. So this is the ability to believe in God, the ability to be here this morning and put our faith and trust in Jesus, to raise our hands up, to sing praise songs, 
to have gratitude for the cross and the resurrection, just the ability to do that is a gift from God. But that's not something you did. That's not, that's not because you're just a great person because you're here today. But that's a mindset of a lot of Christians, whether they know it or not. And uh, I went the wrong direction here. Our next scripture I'm going to look at is Titus. Uh, uh, well, that's Romans 20. Let's go back to 3 5. This is Titus 3 5. He saved us because of his mercy, not because of the righteous things that we have done. He did it through the washing of the new birth and the renewing by the Holy Spirit. And Romans 3.20 says, It follows that no human being will be treated as righteous in his presence by doing what the law says because the knowledge of sin comes through the law. So the whole purpose of the law, talking about the 613 laws that we find in, in the Old Testament, the whole purpose of the law was to show us that we were sinners. Show us that we needed a Savior in our life because there's nobody can live into it. Nobody could live into the law. It was there to put your sin on steroids. It was there to show you that despite how hard you try, despite how much you think you're a good person, you can't do it. And so you need a Savior. That's the whole point of, of what's going on here. And so that's important to know that. And the reality of it is, you know, if humans really knew how ungodly they were, they would, they would be in a better place than that. And so that's really important to know as we go through today's times. If humans would realize they are ungodly by nature, repent, turn from their sins, and exercise faith, God would save them from the power of sin. And that's the reality. But we don't recognize our ungodliness. We judge ourselves by our intentions, and we judge everybody else by our actions. And in our
Hi again, this is Harold. Thanks for listening to our weekly message and podcast. I hope that we have shared something helpful to you wherever you are on your spiritual journey. Just so you know a little bit more about us, we are Hill Tran United. Hill Tran United is an alliance between Hillsboro United Methodist Church and Transformation United Methodist Church. We are kingdom churches and kingdom communities for people who aren't into church. We meet Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. at Hillsboro United Methodist Church and 11 a.m. at Transformation United Methodist Church. Both churches are located in the northeastern tip of the beautiful Ozark Mountains, located in Jefferson County, Missouri. We also meet during the week in smaller groups that we call life groups and home churches, and that's how we make it relational. We hear regularly from people from all over who are engaging in personal and group studies based on our teaching, and we would love to know if that is happening where you are at. If you want to connect with us, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Vimeo, and YouTube, or you can download our app from your favorite app store. Just search for the app titled Our Church by Church Dev and enter in Hilltran United, and you can access all of our available audio, video teachings, plus through the app you can, and our, or our website, you can download our PowerPoint slides, bulletin, sermon notes, and discussion questions. It's all there for you. And lastly, if you want to learn more about how you can support Hillsboro United Methodist Church or Transformation United Methodist Church financially, please go to www.hilltran.org for more information and to give. We appreciate anything you can do to help. Hey, thanks for being a member of this extended church family. I'm glad we are in this together as kingdom people commencing shoulder to shoulder to help people rediscover life and experience the kingdom of God.